I had an awesome conversation with Venkat Nagaswamy about what account-based marketing is and how AI can help to scale ABM initiatives. He also mentioned that one of the key aspects of a successful ABM initiative is content that speaks to the right target audience. Lastly, he talked about the fact that AI is a bigger change than anything we have ever seen before and we are just getting started. Hello, hello, Ederson Oliver here. This is the Outsourcing Podcast, where I talk to experts, to business owners, to influencers, to people about outsourcing and the trends in the market as well. And talking about trends, no bigger trend out there than AI. And that's the reason why I have our guest today. His name is Venkat Nagaswamy, and he is mm -hmm. the founder and CEO of a company called Mariana. Venkat, welcome. Good to be here, Anderson. Very good, very good, Venkat. Uh, by the way, Mariana is an AI-powered, account-based marketing platform. Now, I'm going to start with the basics here, uh, Venkat, because to be honest, the first time that I saw ABM was when I landed on MarianaIQ.com and I said, what the hell? is ABM. So, so Vekat, let's educate, my, educate myself and my audience as well. What is ABM? Yeah, <clears throat> I always say ABM uh, is old wine in new bottle. Uh, but ABM basically stands for account-based marketing. And as the name implies, it's basically about uh, orchestrating a series of activities around any given account, uh, a series of marketing activities, uh, which is tied around an account that brings a greater alignment between sales and marketing. If you really think about it, any sale is by definition account-based, right? Uh, a salesperson goes into an account, they figure out who, uh, uh, and any B2B uh, purchase, there is 15 people involved in the purchase. So a salesperson goes into an account, they figure out one decision maker, then they may, maybe they go out and figure out all the influencers involved in an account and finding this whole uh, uh, buying committee or the purchase committee, right? So any uh, sale by definition is account-based. And therefore, uh, this whole movement around ABM is being able to then say, hey, how given that any sale is uh, uh, by definition ABM, what are the kinds of marketing activities that we can surround an account with therefore, uh, and thereby help uh, sales close, uh, close better? Now, <clears throat> you can ask yourself, why is this becoming uh, very important, very current today? Uh, now, by the way, the definition of ABM as laid by uh, uh, the marketing association was done, I don't know, 25 years ago. So it's nothing new. The reason why it's become, uh, and this is my own take on it, take it for what it's worth. Uh, <clears throat> you know, before, let's say 10, 15 years ago, uh, when you talked about uh, a B2B marketing, it was primarily centered around uh, 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 events, third party events, first party events, and so on and so forth. That's and that and branding were pretty much uh, what, what B2B marketing was. And then about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, with the rise of marketing automation, uh, you had a, a whole bunch of uh, people, uh, marketers, who grew up on inbound marketing, right? Uh, which is you write a lot of blogs, you write a lot of content that, that engages your audience and therefore bring the, uh, the audience in. And that we, we marketers have been doing very effectively for the past 10 or 15 years. Now, over the past five years or so, uh, what, once that movement started happening, uh, parallelly, there's another movement around having marketing uh, justify its existence, so to speak. And the reason, and immediately that translated into tying into sales and therefore, uh, how does marketing assist sales? Now, when you're thinking about inbound leads and inbound marketing, you quite did not have, you did not quite have control over what accounts were responding to you, who was responding to you, what personas were responding to you and so on. And so the leads that we marketers were sending, uh, 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 sending to uh, uh, sales were not that robust. So with this, uh, with this need for alignment and with this need for accountability, marketing has now needed to go and, uh, and reinvent outbound marketing and to be able to start getting uh, engagement and connection with the accounts that the sales guys really care about. And those are the motivating reasons as to why ABM has become big in the past uh, year or two, 
uh, and, and, and it's going to continue to become big. And this, we believe, is the future of B2B marketing, a combination of inbound and outbound, and outbound being primarily uh, on an ABM basis. Got so, so Venkat, if I, if I may ask, what is the difference then with uh, just the traditional outbound sales you know, uh, as compared to, to ABM? What, what is the difference there? What, what else is there in the ABM model that is not already present in the outbound uh, selling, you know? Yeah, so <clears throat> you have, uh, 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 so a couple of things, right? When you, in, even in traditional uh, uh, account management and sales, you would go try to figure out uh, uh, which accounts to go after, who in the account to go after, and how to do sales to them. And predominantly it was either email-based or phone-based or event-based. So the other types of activities that you can do today uh, have to do with targeted uh, advertising. Targeted advertising in the form uh, of uh, display ads. You can do the same for Google AdWords. You can use the same thing on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, all these new slew of these digital methods that you've got uh, have allowed you to start doing uh, a more targeted outbound. So let me be slightly more precise on that, right? Uh, traditionally, when when you uh, tried to do B2B advertising, you went uh, to, let's say, uh, a, a publisher site and you'd place an ad on that, right? Now, with identity-based marketing uh, becoming bigger and IP address to company mapping becoming bigger, you're now able to target specific accounts and people within specific accounts, uh, people with certain titles, certain interests, certain persona, uh, companies like ours are using AI to be able to figure that out, right? So traditional uh, uh, marketing had to do with, uh, or traditional sales had to do with phone calls and emails. Today, you can layer it on with a whole bunch of other online marketing activities that you didn't have an option to do earlier because of bigger targeting uh, or better targeting capabilities that you're getting today. Got it. So so what you're saying, let, let me see if I, if I got the idea there. So what you're saying is that now the marketer is able to reach that person from that function on that company specifically. I mean, laser sharp. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, so uh, this the, the 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 so the way to think about it is, we can now uh, targeting capabilities today now allow you to find the account, find the specific people or set of people within the account, and target just those people uh, uh, using uh, using targeted advertising, and that is the level of. Uh, 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 specificity that you can get today that you couldn't get even two or three years ago. Let me and uh, uh, let me address a couple of more things on that, right? So when you think about digital advertising, you can broadly think about two ways. One is identity-based advertising, and the other one is anonymous uh, advertising. By anonymous, I mean cookie-based or IP address-based, and that is traditionally what uh, we were doing a lot on. Now, in the past, let's say five years or so with Facebook, LinkedIn, and other things coming on, you have an ability to target the individual or a small set of individuals uh, in a very targeted laser focused way because of this identity getting established on the web, which you didn't have until recently. So that is one of the big things that's happened in the past, let's say three, four, five years, which allows you to be able to target the individual in a much more laser focused way than what you could do earlier. God, that brings uh, Venka to a question that pops up in my mind right away is that if you are laser targeting one individual, how how does that scale? I mean, how are, are we talking about you know high? Are we talking about uh, you know uh, big big ticket items, big ticket accounts that it's really worth going after? You know that individual, that company, because again, it comes to mind right away. How do you scale an initiative like that? Yeah, great question, right? So this is where. Uh, 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 AI and all these modern analytical techniques come in. To your earlier point, uh, which is that a lot of uh, ABM is, sounds a lot like traditional outbound sales, right? So if you think about what a, a good salesperson does when you give them an account, they first go figure out, okay, which account is a good account based on uh, a, a parameter that they've established in their head. And then they say, okay, uh, typically for these types of accounts, I have uh, these types of personas involved in the purchase, and therefore I need to go target them, right? So that's what a salesperson does. Now, because of AI, you can do the same exercise at scale, and you can do this for thousands of accounts uh, 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 without uh, being able to, uh, uh, without needing a huge human uh, capability to be able to do that. Of course, there are some people 
who are doing it uh, based on human beings. Uh, uh, you know, there are people, uh, companies like Upwork, uh, who it, who have a whole bunch of uh, people that you can get for uh, uh, hire, and they do these kind of work. However, you can do the same thing uh, with AI and and replicate uh, a lot of what a good salesperson would do at scale with ABM and that, uh, with uh, with AI. And which is why we always say, because of AI, ABM at scale becomes a reality that wasn't the case, let's say, two years ago, three years ago. Got it. And, and I love the fact that you brought their Upwork, you know, because our audience is is used to, you know, wh what is the link between AI and outsourcing? And, and I, would, I, I usually say that, you know, the traditional outsource model, we outsource to human intelligence. And now with AI, we are outsourcing to an artificial intelligence, you know? Exactly right. I mean, so the, the it's very instructive to see, if you see how outsourcing has been uh, have grew over the past 20, 30 years. You're going to see a similar pattern in how AI is adopted uh, over time. And let me explain what I mean by that, right? So outsourcing happens for uh, two or three reasons, right? One reason is that you don't have the capability within the company. Secondly, you don't have the capacity within the company. Uh, and thirdly, even if you do have the uh, uh, capacity, you might say, hey, for cost reasons and other things, I might want to out uh, outsource it. So those are some of the reasons why you would outsource. Similarly, AI is going to get adopted in these types of places, right? So what I mean by that is when I say ABM at scale for Mariana, that when you want to do it at scale, it's very difficult to do it uh, uh, on your own within any company. However, AI can do it, uh, deliver that at scale, right? Or you can outsource this and having, have it delivered at, at scale as well. Second point is, uh, 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 capacity, right? So uh, in some areas, let's say for instance, uh, inspections, right? Actually inspection and, and auditing are great examples. Now we don't, uh, when you look at a, a, a factory floor, depending on, uh, depending on, let's say, uh, depending on the value of the goods being uh, inspected, you would either inspect every piece. So if you're looking at a car, every car gets inspected. On the other hand, if you're making, I don't know, chocolate, uh, uh, each of which costing one dollar. You don't inspect every chocolate. You inspect uh, uh, at, uh, you know every random every tenth or so. Similar to Abzin, uh, uh, the, uh, where they inspect uh, uh, or where auditing on expense reports happen uh, used to happen randomly. Today you can inspect it at every go. Right. So what I'm coming at is there are certain cases where uh, we have not deployed human intelligence because it's human intelligence is too expensive or we don't have the capacity to do it, in which case you might want to outsource it either to a human being or to uh, 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 or to AI. And certain areas where even uh, offshoring to another country or even outsourcing to a different place, human intelligence is still going to be more expensive than uh, 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 AI. And those are the places where AI would take off. AI would take off in, in, in the second case capacity uh, uh, constraint area, it's going to take off in places where uh, the, the risk of missing certain things is not that great and the reward is, is fairly good. So you do it. So for instance, again, going back to the expense report uh, uh, monitoring, if you make a mistake once in a while, it's not that great, right? And even for targeting for that matter, in, in marketing, you know, uh, if we get 95% targeting right, that's huge, right? People, uh, uh, but if you get 5% wrong, that's not that big of a deal. At the same time, you don't want to deploy AI to, uh, let's say, detecting uh, or immediately uh, de relying it solely to do hard operations, for instance, because the negative, the downsides of uh, of AI getting it wrong is, is huge. So anyway, so uh, uh, the way we think about it, AI will get adopted in a similar pattern to what you saw in outsourcing, where you start doing it either based on capacity constraint or capability constraints and, and do the risk versus reward equation to then determine what's going to get uh, outsourced and what's not, right? I mean, I, I can keep going on on that. So one example would be, if you think about outsourcing, Y2K was the place where uh, outsourcing really took off. And the reason for that being, there's not a lot of capability within companies because of Y2K. And once Y2K died away, people then figured out, hey, you can use the same thing for doing other things as well. So that was a capability type of thing that then morphed into a capacity. Similarly, uh, AI will also see a similar pattern uh, in the future. Got it. And, and again, even in a case like Mariana, your AI, I'm going to put it this way, your AI 
will become smarter and smarter and smarter as it practices more and gain more and more knowledge over time, correct? Absolutely, right. So one of the main points about machine learning and, and uh, AI is that uh, it learns from not only the data, you, historical data you provided, but as uh, uh, it, it executes and as it figures out what's uh, important and not important, it gets better and better over time, right? And that uh, capability of AI to learn uh, as it proceeds is one of the important things that uh, uh, that we deploy for. Got it. So, uh, uh, Venkat, you alluded to that already a, a few times there, but I'm going to ask that anyway. Uh, Mariana was founded back in 2013, correct? Yeah, in 13, early 14, yeah. 14. So, uh, so what was the gap that you saw in the marketplace that you said, hey, you know what? There must be a better solution for that. And again, you alluded to that, but I would like to, to be more explicit in my, in my question here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, explicitly, the, the, the key problem that we are trying to solve is uh, uh, finding the purchase committee within ABM and how do we target them, surround them with marketing, right? So the background behind this is that uh, before I started this company, I used to run enterprise marketing for Juniper Networks. And now Juniper Networks sells networking gear. We had two basic uh, parts of the company. One is a service provider, which sold to AT&T, Verizon, and so on and so forth. And something like, you know, 15, 20, uh, 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 companies around the world contributed to you know 60 70 percent of service provider revenues for Juniper. I don't remember the exact numbers, but approximately. And so any marketing that we did on the service provider side was almost by definition ABM, right? Because you people like AT and T were a few hundred million dollar customers, and when you did marketing, you were trying to get all the two thousand or five thousand people within AT and T to engage with Juniper, right? When we were trying to take the same lessons of uh, ABM from the service provider side to the enterprise side, and I handled the enterprise side, we immediately ran into uh, issues where we said, hey, one, we don't know which accounts to go after because unlike the service provider side in uh, uh, the enterprise side, you know, this could be any company, tens and thousands of companies around the globe who could be targets for us. How do you figure out which companies to go after? Secondly, what is the purchase committee with it? A, a given account. How do we figure out who is uh, uh, involved in the purchase process, buyers, influencers, and so on. And once you uh, figure out these buyers and influencers, how do I surround that person with all kinds of marketing, right? As we alluded to earlier, display, uh, 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 banner, uh, banner ads, display ads, Facebook social ads, uh, Google AdWords, and so on. That's basically what we do, which accounts, who within the accounts, how to surround them with all kinds of marketing. Got it, got it. Okay, so you mentioned, you mentioned there are a few big names, you know, Benkat, uh, Jupiter Networks, and then again, you alluded to, to big organizations. Is, is ABM applicable as well, not only with Mariana, but, but overall applicable as well to, to SMBs? Yeah, so uh, this is a, 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 you know, even when you read some of the analysts, this is a discussion that's been going on in a, in a lot of different places. For some people, ABM by definition, applies only to very large accounts. Uh, uh, however, we and a lot of other people believe that uh, uh, with modern uh, uh, AI techniques and so on, ABM can scale, right? Let me explain why people say the former and, and why, uh, uh, why we believe it could be the latter. So when you're trying to do outbound and when you're trying to do it uh, uh, on an ABM fashion, not only are you trying to figure out which accounts and who within the account, you're trying to engage people uh, with uh, kind of content and kind of things that are relevant to that particular account, that particular industry, that particular account, region, that particular individual in the purchase process, the purchase cycle, and so on. So there is a, a fairly complex, uh, of, there's a lot of uh, human effort that traditionally needed to be involved to understand which accounts and who within the account, uh, to understand their needs, both from an account level parameters and for uh, industry level parameters, account level parameters, and individual parameters, you needed to understand all of these things to create content and to create engagement with the audience, right? Now, what we're saying is that, yes, that's all, and that's how you need to do marketing. However, with modern AI techniques, you can do the same level of uh, uh, understanding somebody from an industry account and an individual level, you can do it at scale using AI, where AI, uh, uh, you know, in some sense, we are out to your earlier point. We are outsourcing the human intelligence that was able to deploy it only if you've, for a few tens of accounts. You can do the same thing 
for, for you thousands of accounts because of AI. And so the point we're making is that, you know, ABM by definition needs to be very targeted, very personalized to the industry account and be person. And you, we're saying you can do the same kind of personalization at scale with AI. That's the basic point we're making. Got it. And, and I guess I'd let me let me try to close that. So what you're saying is that because of the AI layer that you are putting in place in, uh, on top of a uh, ABM, you are able to bring costs down because ABM used to be only reachable by you know uh, companies, <laughs> organizations that had the finances to do that, and and now because you can scale that you can scale to a level that is affordable and exactly. at reach of small business as well. Exactly, right? So as we say, every account deserves ABM, right? And it's not just the largest one. Every account deserves an ABM because every purchase, every sale is account-based. It's not, uh, uh, in, uh, I, I mean, you know, if you're buying pencils and staplers, okay, fine. It might be an uh, 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 individual base, but once you go beyond that for any reasonable amount of purchase, it's by definition account based, and there's a lot of people involved in the purchase process. Every account deserves uh, 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 every account deserves a, a ABM. And to your point, because of AI, uh, uh, because we have outsourced, if you will, the effort of doing this ABM to AI, we are able to uh, bring down the costs small enough that it can apply to a very small account, as opposed to only the large accounts we were able to do earlier. Perfect. Perfect. No. No. We're talking about ABM. Let's let's go you know, a bit overview again on the ABM uh, model. And what are the key components, Venkat, if I may ask, of a successful ABM initiative? Yeah, the first thing is uh, 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 it, this is a meta point that applies to these different things. The meta point is that uh, we need to tie up. Uh, sales, marketing, and even like customer support and other things into uh, into a, a connected joint, joint go-to-market model, right? And so to, to deliver on this through ABM, what needs to happen is we look at it in four basic boxes or three boxes with an underlying thing. The first one is uh, uh, account prioritization, which accounts to go after. Second one is contact prioritization. Well, what is the, uh, in serious decisions term, this is the decision group. How do I figure out who are the personas, who are the people within the personas? Uh, and finally, uh, once you do this, what are the types of activities that I'm going to do to execute, uh, to, to, find, uh, to surround these people, right? Meaning what are the physical events I'm going to do? What are the first party events, third party events? What are the online activities that I'm going to do? And all of this is, sits on a very solid foundation of measure measurement, reporting, and planning, right? And so uh, uh, the first step that you would need to do is to first put in enough measurements and systems and reporting so that you can understand what's going on right now, right? And once that is there, then you can, uh, uh, sales, marketing, and customer service can all come together to determine, okay, which type of accounts do we want to go after? Who are the specific list of accounts to go after? Uh, and then marketing and sales can come together to then determine what are the personas, identify those, and then again, execute on different uh, sales and marketing activities that needs to happen, right? And so, and one of the things that we need to be careful about here is that marketing uh, and sales don't need to be aligned, not just in top of the funnel and during the pipeline, but also after the sale, right? How do we help the account better, best use the products that we are selling them uh, uh, to, to engage, uh, to increase engagement and so on. On this note, I'm going to go on a slight tangent and give you an example. You know, so, uh, uh, Cisco did, who were my competitors when I used to work at Juniper, Cisco did an experiment on trying to figure out who are the best salespeople in Cisco, right? And they looked at a lot of different variables uh, and so on. It turned out that it's not, and if you look at quota achievement and so on, it's not tenure, it's not education, it's not experience, it's none of those things. The main thing that determined whether you're going to be successful or not is whether you kept in touch with your accounts in between sale, right? And that is a very, very important thing when you come to do marketing. When we think about marketing, we keep thinking about it in top of the funnel or even, uh, uh, and then we say, okay, how do we support uh, the sale during the, the purchase process? But then we abandon the, uh, our accounts after uh, we sell it. And the point is with this whole ABM and what we're talking about, it's not about a point process. It's about a full process 
of being able to support the customer in their complete lifetime. Got it. And, and I, I would like to hook that with um, how that's applicable to small business because here's the thing, what you mentioned there, you mentioned Cisco, but if you think about a small business, this is key as well because it's not only about getting the sale, but following through and following up and keeping contact after that. So you make sure that whatever they're buying, whatever you're delivering, are really put to use and to the best use of it. So, so again, it, it has repercussion or, or a similarity in the small business uh, scenario as well, you know? Absolutely. In some sense, at least small businesses are at a slight advantage relative to large business, right? Because a large company, uh, because of so many layers between the actual things that are happening on in the field versus what might happen uh, at headquarters, large businesses don't often know what the heck is going on, right? On the other hand, in a small business, uh, the, the, we I mean, I, and we are a 10 people company or 12 people company, so we are a small business ourselves, but everybody in the company knows uh, cust our customers, has connection to the customers, and therefore being able to uh, offer a better level of service, understanding between purchase is far easier in some sense for us as a small company than it would be for a much larger company because we have a more direct link to the customers that, that large companies don't have. So uh, this is applicable, you, you just figure what kind of business that you do, right? Very true, very true. Okay, so so here's the thing. You, you mentioned there the key components to, to uh, execute a successful ABM you know, strategy. Now, let me ask you this. How Mariana comes in place here? Because you mentioned the key components. Does Mariana address everything there? It's one-stop shop for that? Or there is one particular area that you deliver on? T tell a little bit. How do we map Mariana back to the key successful components of ABM? Yeah. So we, Mariana is focused only on uh, the execution for marketing, right? Uh, so uh, uh, there are other, so the, when I made, laid out the three boxes plus the, the measurement and reporting boxes, we don't do anything on the measurement and reporting uh, and, and planning uh, uh, kind of uh, pieces. We also don't uh, uh, do uh, tools uh, that are focused on account-based sales or account-based customer service, uh, similar to what, let's say, an Engageo would do uh, or somebody like uh, an outreach group. Those are people who have uh, tools that help the sales connect up with in this uh, ABM world. We, on the other hand, are focused only from uh, uh, creating, uh, our vision is to create an execution platform for marketing for ABM, right? So that's what we are trying to focus on, which means uh, all the outbound activities that you want to do with respect to ABM, uh, we want to coordinate that which in the in the boxes that I laid out, we help you figure out uh, which accounts to go after, who within the account to go after, and how to do the digital, all the different digital marketing activities that go with it. We don't do the sales uh, activities or we don't do the, uh, the, the offline uh, physical activities and so on. So it's the marketing, ex digital marketing execution is what we are focused on. Got it. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, Venkat, if I ask you, what would be the ideal scenario or profile of a company to work with Mariana? So we have found, uh, um, so taking a step back, the kind of places where we work the best or our ABM approach at scale work best, works best is if uh, uh, you have some kind of fragmented market. By fragmented market, I mean uh, uh, either the, the companies that, buying, uh, that are buying are fragmented or the, the the purchase teams within uh, uh, the companies themselves are very fragmented, right? So we need some kind of fragmentation uh, to work. Uh, can, if can it you is, give, if you're targeting, let let me just stop you right there. Can you give me an example of, of that so I can visualize that a little bit better? Yeah. So to co to contrast the the world that I was talking about earlier for Juniper, you know, because we are selling on the service provider side, we're selling to 15, 20 companies around the world that there's not a whole lot of fragmentation, it's only, only the 15, 20 companies, and Juniper knew all the decision makers for the most part, and probably knew their uh, kids and dogs' names, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, when we're selling to enterprises where we're selling to tens of thousands of companies, or probably even more, we don't know, know all those accounts and who are all the decision makers there. So that is a difference that I would make between uh, 
a, a, a place where the, the, the purchase is concentrated versus a, a more fragmented uh, market, right? So that so anyone who's selling into a fragmented market is good for us uh, as a as a customer to us, right? So that's one uh, uh, aspect. The second aspect that's uh, important is that you have uh, enough content to do uh, to engage the customer, right? So a lot of the context that we talk about in in uh, digital marketing for uh, what we provide uh, have to do with you know uh, uh, social have to do with uh, Google AdWords and display and so on. And these are slightly once removed from your traditional uh, uh, kind of marketing where you're supporting uh, various uh, 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 various on the field activities or more uh, what I would describe as into the funnel activities. So these are more top of the funnel activities and therefore you need to have good top of the funnel content to engage uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the prospects that, that are, uh, that, that uh, the content needs to be engaging to the prospect, right? So content is, an, is a very important uh, piece uh, for us. And thirdly, you need to have enough uh, historical customers for us to do uh, uh, an analysis. Typically that is means uh, 200, 300 transactions and above, or 200, 300 names of uh, companies and people uh, and above is kind of the minimum that we need to be able to do uh, these AI models to be able to uh, then help you with targeting, right? So those are three broad uh, success criteria. What that translates to typically is that it's it's a company about 125 employees and above uh, uh, who are selling into a fragmented market, who might be using a lot of Google AdWords today, or who might be using a lot of uh, 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 content marketing today and are looking to add an outbound uh, motion through ABM. Those are the types of uh, people who are best fit for our companies who are best fit for us. Got it. <clears throat> One curiosity that I have, uh, uh, Venkat, is that have, have you seen the use of Mariana by uh, marketing agencies as well? Because what it seems is that, of course, you are selling directly to the to the company who will be, you know, benefiting from the technology. But do you see a middleman there? Do you see the, the use of, a, of an agency there? Absolutely, right? I mean, uh, if you think about it, I would say, and this is, I'm going to make up a number, but but something like, you know, 70, 80% of uh, B2B marketing uh, activities are usually outsourced to some agencies, right? It, it, it's a combination of creative agencies, marketing automation agencies, uh, media buying agencies, and so on. So those agencies are super important to us, uh, and we know we need to deal with them. We just haven't, uh, we've just now started working with one agency, Position Square, to help us think through this thing. But we do want to work with agencies because we know that they're uh, an important player in this ecosystem. Uh, and a, a lot of these agencies, in fact, are providing with human beings some of the services our AI can provide. And what we want to do is to help these agencies do more for their uh, clients and do more at scale, right? So we do want to work with agencies. We're beginning to work with agencies, but over time we want to add more and more of those people. Perfect, perfect. <clears throat> okay, got it. Question here. Do you eat your own dog food? Absolutely, right. So until, so we're in July now. Until March, we did not have uh, a single salespeople in the person in the company apart from me, right? I'm CEO and doing sales as well. And and from May of last year to uh, uh, let's say March of this year, every deal that we did, every uh, 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 customer that we landed, which is about, I don't know, 10 or 12, whatever it was, uh, all came through uh, through Mariana and Mariana. There were some inbound uh, uh, things as well, but uh, came through Mariana and Mariana. So, you, you know, in some sense, we are not a good customer for us because we don't generate a lot of content and so on. However, to your point, because people ask the exact same question that you just did, Addison, uh, uh, we we do e use our, eat our own dog food and we generate, uh, I would say, Today we're generating about uh, uh, 20 to 40 leads per month, uh, uh, just based on Mariana and Mariana uh, um, on our own. So yes, we do. Perfect, perfect. So talking about clients, do we want to highlight uh, the results of a particular client? I saw I saw a video from uh, Mariana about Zendesk. I mean, so I, I know the Zendesk case. If you want to highlight Zendesk, that's fine. If you want to highlight somebody else, that's fine as well. But highlight some of the results that you have been able to bring to some of your clients. 
Yeah, so let's actually talk about Zendesk for a lot of different, couple of different reasons, right? So Zendesk, uh, so Zendesk, as everybody knows, uh, uh, is is a well-known B2B marketing company. They've been doing a lot of inbound marketing historically. They won numerous awards for their great B2B marketing, uh, and and predominantly they would have a system where uh, uh, they drove inbound mark inbound leads, uh, which went then went into a trial that they would then try to convert them. Now, uh, for the reasons that we talked about earlier, for uh, 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 they uh, wanted to improve their targeting capabilities and do some outbound to target uh, specific types of accounts, right? Because they uh, they wanted to do uh, larger accounts than what they were historically uh, doing. So they came to us with uh, that problem. How do we improve our lead generation targeting capabilities on an outbound basis that would augment the great inbound work that we are already doing? So in that context, they gave us something like 400,000 400, uh, 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 individuals' names in uh, relating to some 40,000 companies in, uh, uh, also in the US. And we created an account and persona model based on that. Now, uh, and, and the reason why the, I bring up this 400,000 is that, so this uh, amount of 400,000, you couldn't have done an analysis on these 400,000 with human beings, right? Uh, you, could, you could have maybe gathered data about 400,000 people, but bringing it all together to analyze the patterns of these 400,000 people, you, it's, it's almost impossible to uh, do it with human beings. And this is, so we were able to generate uh, an account model and a persona model based on uh, AI, and we were able to do it within a day, right? Or half a day or whatever it took us, I don't remember. Now, I should note that they did an internal effort on their own internally with a bunch of other consultants and so on, uh, and they took three months to come up with uh, a model which involved sampling and so on and so forth, which came up with something which is largely similar to what we did. So the, this is more to demonstrate the AI capabilities and this earlier we're talking about outsourcing and being able to do things at scale because of AI, I just wanted to bring that up, right? So anyway, so we created this account model, we created the persona model, we then targeted something like, uh, we created an audience of about 100,000 uh, people from the data and other things that we had, uh, and they gave us, and, and, and Zendesk ran campaigns targeting these people. Now, a couple of key thing, points, uh, they were able to uh, increase their lead volume by 4X while uh, 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 improving quality. They didn't tell us how much the quality improved by, presumably because we'll increase prices, but anyway, so while improving quality, while at the same time maintaining the cost, right? So 4X better, uh, more volume, better uh, quality at the same cost. And one thing that I want to note here is that when they were trying to reach these 100,000 people, we uh, uh, they, they ran a campaign targeting them on Facebook and they were able to reach half of that audience in three days. Now, this is an important point because there's not a whole lot of marketing activities that you can do to reach so many people in a very targeted fashion in a very quick way, right? And that's the reason why having a... Uh, 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 tar being able to target people on a platform like Facebook, uh, which is high interaction channel, but being able to be very focused on that is hugely important because of the uh, because of Facebook scale, right? And so anyway, so they were able to reach 50% of the audience within three days, something they cannot do in any other uh, fashion. So that's a quick summary of Zendesk, uh, uh, better targeting, delivering Forex improved uh, uh, leads while improving quality and maintaining cost. Okay, well, that's great. That's great, great results there. We are coming towards the end here, Venkat. But before before I let you go, I have a few a few more points here. First is by on on you no know, Mariana's implementation of for a new client, a new company. What is the number one challenge that that it's you know we have to you know to go through this roadblock here first before we can get some results. What is what is the one thing that uh, that is usually the, the biggest roadblock there for a new client to come to a platform yep. like Mariana IQ? It, it's content. It's having good content, right? <laughs> so typically what ends up happening is uh, 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 people have good into the funnel content, but, but top of the funnel content, uh, uh, a lot of people might not have. Uh, that's number one. And two, uh, uh, how do we leverage and position this content, right? So to give you an example, uh, we were doing a trial uh, a, a year or so ago with uh, with somebody and they were promoting a Gartner report. 
and 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 they said, hey, uh, look at this Cartoon report. We are in the top right hand corner of Cartoon report. We didn't get a single uh, download, single click, whatever, right? We changed the copy to read, hey, learn more about this topic from this Gartner report, boom, seven to 10 uh, downloads per day. The reason I'm pointing that out is uh, the first is perceived as, you know, the vendor just chest thumping, saying I'm so great. The second one is something that that uh, helps uh, the, the, the recipient, the prospect, and that is the kind of true good marketing that you want to do that's helpful to the person receiving it. Uh, and so, it, so it's a combination of content copy and creatives that you do for the ad that needs to be helpful to the uh, uh, end customer or the prospect. Uh, and that is probably the single biggest uh, determinant of, apart from of course us doing our job, that is the single biggest determinant of whether the, the a campaign that you do with us is going to be good or not, right? Perfect, perfect, very good. It's the difference, you know, between doing a, a me, me, me type of content strategy as opposed to give, give, give. And by exactly. the way, we can help you, you know? Absolutely, yeah, right. Perfect. That true kind of marketing is this permission marketing that helps you. And in, in, in of course, we'll be, there are places in which we can help you. There'll be other places where we can, but that's the true kind of good kind of marketing that you want to be able to do. Got it, got it. Okay, so Venkat, again, coming towards the end here, what is one thing that you'd like people to leave this conversation knowing about, either about Mariana, about ABM, about the future? What is it? What is it? One thing that you like to stick on people's head after they listen to this conversation? Yeah. So you know, and I want to bring it down to AI, uh, the the topic of the, uh, a lot of people today, and and, and what we're doing. You know, uh, we. The, People like us who've been around for a few decades in the high tech and so on, we've seen a lot of changes. We've seen internet come, we've seen uh, mobile come. AI is a, a bigger change than any of these things. In our lifetime, this is going to be the biggest uh, change that we've ever seen. There's a lot of uh, uh, things going on uh, about uh, uh, you know perceptions about AI and how it's going to take people's jobs and so on and so forth. We, on the other hand, are optimistic about the future, about how this is going to add value to everybody uh, in the world and make our lives a better place. So I would encourage everybody, listeners of this podcast, to, to go learn more about it, right? Learn more about AI. Do not, uh, uh, worry, do not be too concerned about uh, uh, what people are saying. Find out for yourself, right? Learn, there's a whole bunch of resources available on the web these days to understand more about this. And, and more importantly, learn more to remove the mystique of what AI is and understand truly what it can do, right? Because this is going to be the, the future. The, the next 20, 30 years of our lives are going to be dominated by AI and everybody needs to understand what it can actually do. Awesome, awesome. Love that. I know that you are a big reader, so I would like you to finalize here with uh, a book. Recommend a book for people to read whatever topic, whatever subject you want, recommend one book. Yeah, so which is a bit of a challenge because let me show you my, this is only one sixth of the, the books that we have. My, I'm a reader and my wife is a writer, but anyway, uh, we were talking about AI. So let me point out a, a, a book on AI that, uh, that I thought is very good. It's a book called uh, Master Algorithm uh, by this uh, a leading AI researcher called Pedro Domingos. Uh, master algorithm, Pedro Domingos, which gets into AI, which which uh, explains it from a layman's perspective, layperson's perspective, uh, what AI is, what are the different tribes of AI, and how to think about it. So, a book I strongly recommend for people to get their feet wet, uh, and and very relevant apropos to the topic that we are discussing right now. Awesome, awesome. So, um, for people, I mean, as, as you guys all know, all the links. The book that uh, Venkat has just mentioned, everything will be on the show notes, so we can all we can all review it there. Venkat, how can people reach out to you? How can people connect with you? Contact you? What is the best way? Yep, uh, you can follow. Please follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Venkat Nagaswamy. That's V S N Victor E N K A T uh, N A G A S W A M Y. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Or you can write to me, Venkat at MarianaIQ.com. Uh, those are the best ways to uh, get a hold of me. I'm on Twitter all the day. Uh, I take the train. So morning and evening are times when I'm on Twitter all the time. So that's the best way to get a 
hold of me uh, that or email. So uh, we'd be happy to hear from any of you or all of you uh, and help you out in any way we can. Perfect. So again, as I said, all the links mentioned by Venkat will be in the show notes. Venkat, again, it has been a great pleasure, great, great pleasure, really good conversation. I really appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, you shared so much knowledge. If you guys like this video, subscribe to the video on YouTube. You have a lot more there. And thank you very much, Venkat. See you next time. Bye. Thanks a lot, Anderson. Take care.